Welcome to Das Geek. So I am very excited to share Solus with you. I wasn't going to do another desktop distribution review video because in desktop environment, because ultimately there are a lot of geeky people out there who do these already. There's tons of them out there and I don't want to do videos just for the sake of doing them, but a user requested it uh, that I take a look at Solus on my Antergos video so i thought i would go ahead and do this here so if you guys request them i will go and do them and of course as always i look at this from a complete user experience standpoint um, i'm not as interested in discussing all of the technical geekery behind every decision that was made here nor can i give you the entire history of these distributions or would want to for that matter what i'm looking for is if you're looking to switch from Windows or looking to change distributions, maybe the one that you tried isn't fitting your needs, then I'm looking to show you guys opportunities or options out there that I've enjoyed and liked and that you may as well, especially if you like my other video content, then we're probably kindred spirits and you'll like some of the stuff, same things that I like. I want to desktop environment and operating system overall that just simply gets out of my way. I don't want to be forced to install a system and then spend the next eight hours configuring it. Recently, I had to do a Windows uh, installation for a laptop and uh, for my, my friend, and it just ended up taking so long to get all of the updates and software downloaded and, of course, registration keys and things moved and I don't want to do that in Linux. That's why I moved away. One of the reasons I moved away from Windows. So that's the whole user experience from beginning to end is what I look at. So here is Solus. Solus is a very popular, especially it's getting more and more popular. I found and I've not been in Linux as long as a lot. I think last November is when I really started getting into Linux, but it's really become popular hearing about it all over the place now and for good reason. Solus has just an absolute amazing user experience from beginning to end, which I'll show you here in a moment. It is an operating system that indeed gets out of your way. I don't want it to know that it's necessarily there. Uh, I just want to get in and do what I need to do, whether that's programming, video editing or whatnot. And Solus certainly provides that. I like to take a look at their site first to kind of understand what they want themselves to be described as so personal os for personal computers so solus is definitely targeting that personal computing market built for people like you by people like you it's empowered to share a vision of strong community working on a common goal development and improvements to solus are by people who want to use their computers like you do solus stands on an open platform powered by proven technologies including gnu and linux so uh, for home and office, it comes with the liberal office suite for developers. It comes with a whole bunch of packages in there for you to get in and start coding right away, which is pretty cool for content creators. You have your options of Avidamux. I don't know how you pronounce that correctly. Caden live shotcut Solus provides software to help you express yourself creatively GIMP, GIMP and Inkscape are there. Muse score and mix for your music production. So really all of these things tying together to kind of create this seamless experience. And then for gaming, of course, on a personal computer, you want a game and this is built with that in mind. There are a lot of options within the software repository, which we'll take a brief look at that you can go in and download some of these completely open source games are available for free and uh, play them. A lot of fun. Uh, also, you can, of course, install Steam and any of those other services and be able to play that as well. So outside of their description, let's now go and take a look at Solus and the desktop. Now, I want you to keep in mind that I installed this on my MacBook 2012. It's uh, not a super powerful computer. It's not super not powerful either. Is that the best way to describe it? it it's, it's the middle of the road. It's a 2012. It's got a, a mobile i5 in it and it's got an ssd that it was upgraded with and it now has 16 gigabytes of ram that it was upgraded with so it's got a little more enhancements kind of like a sleeper out there uh, than your standard one but it ran solus beautifully and prior to this i was using ubuntu budgie 
And in this case, because I already have a video on Ubuntu Budgie and you could see that desktop environment, I installed Solus with GNOME. So you'll be able to see uh, Solus with GNOME and some of the features that it has there. So of course, if you install the Budgie version, you're gonna have a slightly different experience with the desktop environment. But overall, with the options of desktop environments that I've played with from Budgie to GNOME, you will see that while those options, there are multiple options there, all of those options are seamlessly integrated into the operating system. So there's no missing gaps, there's no missing drivers or programs or anything I had to go out there and look for. It integrates very well and it flows seamlessly so they don't feel like two different things. I don't want my desktop environment to feel different than my OS. I want them to work together cohesively to give me that full user experience and that's what you're going to see here. So let's go take a look. All right, so you only had to wait five whole minutes of me babbling to get here, but this is Solus running on GNOME. So right away, if you go up to the top here, and this is what I talk about seamless integration, you've got your notifications right here on the top where they should be. You've got a calendar there, easy to access. It makes sense. You click on the date and the time, you get that. An eject button for the MacBook. This is a screen capture plugin that I added in. Uh, to the program. Of course, that's a Telegram group icon. And then if you click over onto the right side, you can see we have headphones, audio control, brightness, uh, of course, my modem setup, Bluetooth, my battery charging, and any username information. And of course, the ability to power off, get into settings. You can see there was an icon at the bottom for settings. Plus, I was able to get from users, I can back in and get right into settings again, or I can right click on the desktop and get into settings. So very well integrated in allowing you to get where you need to very quickly, no matter where you're at. And that's one of the things I love. So you can get in here, change what needs to be changed. And here's some of the details on the MacBook Pro that I have, a little i5-3210, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 230 gigabyte SSD. We can go and change some of our default applications. I added Vivaldi in here, it comes standard with Mozilla. And then you of course can change how you want your media uh, and what programs you want with your media. The software center, I think, is the highlight. This is the, the beauty of Solus here. So you, it's just very easy to navigate. Things are where they should be within the categories themselves. And we've got multimedia and graphics. Within there, we go in the graphics, and instantly you start seeing the programs you would expect to see when you click on graphics. Um, you can easily get to uh, the section to see all the software that you've installed, and you also have third-party apps that they've categorized here that you can go and install with the click of a button. So you want Chrome, I don't know why, but if you want it, it's there. Sublime Text, Spotify, which is a plugin I'll show you later, and just a lot of cool things that people use third-party that you can install very easily here. And of course, you can search and set up settings for your update frequencies, etc. So everything is very controllable, but you can see it's all simple. Simple menus, simple to navigate, using dash to dock here at the bottom that allows you to get into all of your programs. And I love dash to dock. It's just, it doesn't have all the customizability of some of the dash uh, docks out there, but it has just enough that you can get it to do what you want without it being completely annoying or changing something you truly didn't mean to. And so I really love dash to dock and you've got that option here in GNOME. So here are some of the programs and you can see it's kind of like a tablet interface that pops up. So if you're used to using those type of tools or your phone, this will be very familiar to you in being able to navigate. Some people don't like this at all. They want that real desktop PC feel uh, like maybe KDE gives you, but I, I don't have any issues with it. Of course, you have your tweak tool here so you can get in there and start playing with the appearances. And if you want a dark theme, if you want to change your GTKA plus or change your icon themes, you can do that very easily right here within your tweak tool. And uh, just absolutely, if you love customizing, you've got a lot to play with here and can have a lot of fun. But one of the things I really like, we're going to add our icons to the desktop, is the extension capabilities here. And of course, use, those of you who use this already are familiar with it. But again, the dash to dock that we added in, and then you can go down here, get more extensions, and you're going to see a whole list of extensions, 83 pages to be exact of extensions that you can add in here to GNOME to really make it yours. So everything from application rem uh, menus, removing drives, alternate tabs, opening weather, extensions, top icons, 
sensors for your CPU and your overall temperatures. It's just, you know, 83 pages of this to do with what you will. And so I think GNOME works beautifully uh, with Solus to create this really fantastic desktop environment experience. Of course, you got your applications over here on the left, a little tweak that I made uh, so that you could also access them if your cursor's up there and it's not close to the bottom. If you right click, you can change your background, you can open a terminal, everything again, seamless, very fast, very quick, allows you to get around. As far as your wallpaper presettings in there, of course, they got lots of beautiful wallpapers for you to choose from. I thought they had a very nice selection here. And of course, you can customize and add your own. So let's go ahead and add Dask Geek, a uh, little wallpaper in there because, you know, you got you got to pimp it out with the right brand there. So Dask Geek rocking the Solus and uh, absolutely just love this program. Now, one of the issues that I did run into in installing it with Mac, the only issue is the Broadcom uh, Wi-Fi adapter did not work. So that's pretty normal. You see the driver manager is do flicky here. Uh, it's pretty normal for MacBook to have that issue with the Broadcom driver. In this case, you just have to go to the additional hardware, select it, and then it will turn on. Uh, so not as annoying as others. Uh, you can see the file manager here is files. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty good. I prefer Dolphin personally, but files works pretty well. I haven't had any issues. It seems very easy to navigate and customize, add bookmarks, sort your files, make sure that it shows you a preview picture, uh, which is something that I prefer with as much media as I work with, et cetera, uh, to be able to play with. And other locations, it was able to, uh, it didn't have Synology NAS within the software center, but I was able to add that through creating my own package and that worked uh, pretty good. So there are some options that are not in the software center, but that was the only one out of all of them that I found. But I did find some other applications I didn't even know about that were in the software center that I love. Uh, the Spotify application works seamlessly. Uh, once I installed it, this is one of the third party apps. And you can see if you go into your notifications, you also have a controller there for your music as well. So I can pause and play from there. I can pause and play from the actual application itself. So I thought that was a really nice uh, integration there to kind of give you again that full seamless user experience between the desktop environment and the desktop itself. And then the other tool that I ended up using was GNOME Twitch. I didn't know this existed, but this was awesome. It allows you to get into Twitch and use it as an app versus actually having it in the web, in your web uh, browser, which I prefer. It seems to run smoother and faster and less buffering, et cetera. So uh, a really cool option there that I found just playing around their software center. So overall, Solus, fantastic user experience. I absolutely loved it. I think that the idea that the operating system just simply gets out of your way is perfectly implemented here. There are things that, uh, like I said, if there are specific software that may not be in your software center, then you're going to have to go build those packages or find them. But it seems like the developers and Ike here are very uh, in touch with their community and they're definitely in touch with wanting to make sure that your user experience feels complete with this OS. And I think they've done a fantastic job. So Solus is definitely up there as one of my favorites. There are some that I've touched that I don't like, as you guys know about, but this one is one that would be definitely in my top five distributions that I've played with and certainly an amazing experience for a laptop or portable computer. Uh, certainly could be a daily driver as well on my main machine. Uh, I prefer Arch in some ways just because it allows me just a lot more control over what I can install in things and there's just a lot more available. But overall, I think they've done an amazing job on Solus. I absolutely love it, would definitely recommend it. And if you installed it today, you will be very, very happy with it. I think they've done a great job. So leave your comments below. Let me know if you've checked out Solus, if you love it as much as I have, or are you one of those who tried it in the past and ended up not liking it and won't go back? Let me know. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.